Hello, welcome. My name is Norman Fenton. This short video is one of a series that I prepared concerned with probability and risk assessment. The topics covered in the videos range from basic introductory probability primers through to more advanced topics like Bayesian networks. I hope you enjoy them. In this short video, I'm going to explain the binomial theorem from scratch. Imagine that we're playing a game with a die and that we consider it a success if we roll a six. Oh. Then assuming it's a fair six-sided die, the probability of success on any single roll is one over six. The probability of a failure, in other words, throwing anything other than a six, is gonna be five over six. Suppose we roll the die five times, then the total number of successes could be zero, one, two, three, four, or five. We wanna know the probability of each of these different outcomes. So we want to know the probability that the number of successes equals zero, the number of successes equals one, etc. Once we've provided a probability value for each of these possible outcomes, we say that we've got a probability distribution. The particular distribution in this case is called a binomial distribution. Now instead of simply presenting the formula for calculating each of the probabilities needed here, we can calculate them from scratch. This is going to enable you to understand why the formula is what it is. Let's start with the values that are easiest to calculate. The easiest one is the probability that number of successes equals five. I, in other words, every one of the five rolls is a six. So we get a six on roll one, on roll two, roll three, roll four, and roll five. Success each time. The probability of getting that sequence is the probability of getting a success on the first roll times probability of getting success on the second roll, etc. Because those are independent. And that's just 1 6 times 1 6 five times, in other words, 6 to the power of 5, which is equal to that. So we can fill in that value. Next, we can calculate the probability of getting no successes, i.e. we fail on each of the rolls. So roll 1 is a fail, roll 2 is a fail, 3, 4, and five. And the probability of getting that particular sequence of rolls is the probability of a failure times the probability of failure five times, and that's five over six times five over six five times, which is five over six to the power of five, which is that number, and so we can fill in this part of the probability distribution. Probability that s is equal to one, well this is actually a bit harder, and that's because there are different sequences that result in getting a single success in five rolls. We could get a success followed by four failures, like this. Or we could get a failure followed by one success and three failures. In fact, if we think about it, there are five different ways that we could get a single success in five rolls. Now, just taking the first of these sequences, we can look at the probability of that. That's the probability of getting a success times the probability of getting a failure times the probability of failure, etc four failures. So that's equal to a six times five over six to the power of four, and that's that number. But each of these four different ways of getting one six in five rolls has exactly the same probability as this, because the probability here is just five six times a six times five six times five six times five six, and it will give you the same result, etc. So we've just got to multiply this number by 5, and it gives us this number, which is certainly the same as the problem that s is equal to 0, and we can fill in that. Now calculating the probability that s is equal to 4 is similar to that, because again, what we've got this time is one failure in five rolls. So we've got four successes and one failure, and that can happen also in five different ways. And those are the five different ways and calculating the probability of the first of these is just that probability, and that's equal to one over six to the power of four times five over six, which is this number. And as before, because each of the five sequences resulting in four successes and a single failure has got the same probability, we've just got to multiply that number by five, and we end up with this number, and so we can complete this entry in the probability distribution. 
And that only leaves us with these two, which are harder. Calculate the probability that s is equal to 2. Well, in this case, we've got to think about how many ways we can get two successes in five rolls. Well, that's one way. There's another. There's another. So it turns out that there are 10 different ways that we can get exactly two successes in five rolls. And the first of these, of course, has got probability of success times probability of success times, and then the probability of three failures, which is, of course, equal to that. And because all 10 of these have the same probability, we've just got to multiply that by 10, and we get this number. And so we can complete the entry in the probability distribution here, and that only leaves us with this one. To calculate that one is similar to probability s equal to 2. This time, we've got to think about how many ways we can get exactly two failures in five rolls. And again, there are 10 ways of doing that. The first of those has this probability, success, 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 failure, failure, which is equal to this. And again, because all 10 have exactly that probability, we know that the probability of getting three sixes in five rolls is equal to this value. And so we can complete the entry over here. And there we have the full probability distribution, which happens to be a binomial distribution. But of course, we want to know the general formula. And to work out the general formula, it's all about knowing how to count those combinations. So in general, we want to consider any number n independent trials such as, as we saw, five die rolls. It could be 10 die rolls. It could be 20 toss to the coin. Where on each trial, the probability of success is the same. It's some fixed number p. So in the case of the die roll, p is equal to a sixth. If it was tossing a fair coin, then p would equal to a half. And for each r, ranging from 0 to n, we want to know the probability of getting exactly r successes in these n trials. So we want to know the probability that r equals 0, probability that r equals 1, all the way up to the probability that r equals n. And that would give us the full probability distribution. Well, let's consider one specific such sequence. So suppose we have r successes followed by n minus r failures. So there's a specific sequence in which we get exactly r successes. It just happens to be the one where the r s's all come at the beginning and the n minus r failures all come at the end. Well, it's easy to work out the probability of that particular sequence. It's just p to the power of r, because we've got r successes, times 1 minus p to the power of n minus r, because the probability of a failure it's just 1 minus p, and we've got m minus r of those. So that's the probability of any specific sequence in which we get exactly r successes in n rolls. But of course, as we saw from the previous examples, there's going to be a number of such sequences. And the number of different ways we can arrange r objects into m positions, because that's what we're talking about now. So it's something like that is the formula n factorial divided by r factorial times n minus r factorial, because that is just the number of combinations of r objects from n. And that's also written with this expression. And so, as we saw in the previous example, the number of different ways we can arrange two s's, so where r is equal to 2, into five positions, so where n is equal to 5, applying that formula, is 5 factorial divided by 2 factorial times 3 factorial, we get 10, which is what we saw for the case where we had two successes in five rolls of the die. Hence, the full binomial distribution can now be presented if there are n independent trials, where on each trial the probability of success is p, then the probability of getting exactly r successes is that formula. So if we roll the die eight times, where success is roll a 6, then, then the probability of s is equal to 0 is that, which we calculate as that, probability of s1 is equal to that, and we go through simply applying the formula to each of the values. And now that we've got 
all of the values for all possible outcomes ranging from r equals 0 to 8, we have the full probability distribution, and that is the binomial distribution. Now, you've got the formula, so you can use it to work out binomial distribution, but of course it's much easier to use a tool to do it, and it's very simple in a generist to create that distribution, and it will produce this output, and you can see exactly what the probability distribution is. It looks like that. If you enjoyed this video, please check out the many others that you'll find on my YouTube and Rumble channels. Goodbye.